Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David is talking to ACSAI Ethics and Data Sharing Committee member, Kimji Vagiani. Join us as we discuss circular economy, data interoperability, and fair and secure access to technology and learning for all walks of life. Today, we're talking with Kimji Vagiani. Kimji is the author of Spiritual Journey of an Entrepreneur. He's a mentor, a technologist, and an intellectual thought leader. Kimji was the CEO and the co-founder of SolarGem. In the past, he was awarded the Australian Innovator of the Year. He won the Australian International Design Award, the Powerhouse Museum Award, and the Tech23 Innovative Company Award. Kimji is also an active member of the Data Sharing Committee for the Australian Computer Society, as well as the AI and Ethics Committee. Kimji, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, David, so much. Um, I want to start by, I know that you're passionate about a number of different things, particularly in terms of the sustainable development goals. What important work are you working on right now? Uh, excellent question there, uh, David. And the, uh, the UN SDG goals are a, a, a set of goals uh, that were set out by the UN uh, to look at different aspects uh, of where they can uplift uh, the global community bring them out of poverty, give them opportunities, et cetera. Uh, And so the reason I'm passionate about them is that you can look at those uh, and then look at technology because of being a technologist, uh, particularly data and AI, uh, which is something that I've been working on for a number of years. How do you bring the two together? And how do you impact on those 17 different social uh, sustainable goals that the UN has put out? So some of the things that I'm currently working on is how do we Um, improve uh, agriculture right for farmers particularly around the world and there's many many initiatives there Uh, but one thing that I'm uh, currently uh, looking at spinning out uh, is how do we improve wastage amongst various uh, fruits and food uh, that's grown in the farm and there is just literally billions uh, of dollars worth of wastage that's in the system that artificial intelligence and data sharing between different stakeholders could help and if you can reduce that waste in the system, I think it has an enormous impact on the livelihoods of the, the different stakeholders there. Yeah, of course. I guess in terms of that, we, you, we were starting to talk about the circular economy and about trying to use an, a number of you know, underutilised elements into things. It, it, it's easier to translate in developing countries than it is in Australia, isn't it? It is, it is absolutely, um, and, one of the, and one of the things I've done recently uh, at Torrens University is develop a, a UNSDG Ventures course, and luckily many of the students are from, um, you know, uh, many parts of Africa, the subcontinent, Asia, South America, and many of these folks actually see, uh, uh, you know, a level of poverty that we wouldn't see in Australia, so you're absolutely right, we don't see it the same way. However, we in Australia can make an enormous difference because technologically we're as advanced as any nation in the world. So we have a role, I believe, to contribute to that. So the course that I've developed actually asks the students, and they're all masters, top masters students at Torrens University, and we ask the question, um, you know, what is it that resonates with you? Right. So is it the poverty alleviation? Is it education? Is it women empowerment? Is it clean energy? And then I ask them to... to germinate that idea and then bring in data technology ai to help foster and deliver that initiative and so the one that i mentioned to you earlier actually was born out of that particular course um, i guess the other the real challenge for some of these issues is bringing technology into the picture and making sure that it's it's, it's interoperable mm-hmm. that it works across different platforms irrespective of whether you're in an environment like sydney cbd where there's you know 5g networks yeah. or if you're in the stuck in the middle of some remote regional area where mm-hmm. there's barely any 3g or you know you there's, there's intermittent access to internet that's, right. that's i guess that's a real challenge and when you're talking about agricultural outcomes some of the best uh the best outcomes come from that ability to get minute by minute updates in terms of water management, in terms of uh, um, 
crop yields, in terms of all, you know, land management, soil management, all those sorts of things. What are some of the emerging initiatives for the future that are coming about? I think I think we're still at the nascent stages, really, to be honest with you, as far as uh, UNSDG and technology is concerned. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, the, and, and as AI uh, evolves and becomes better, uh, the the conflu- uh, you know the the convergence between AI data mobile technology and of course the cloud uh, thrown in there, um, I think is where where some of the excitement exciting projects are going to happen. So I'll give an example. One of my trips in India last year, uh, I was uh, from one of the villages. Uh, I was doing a bit of a tour around, and I saw a farmer. And you're right, there's no 5G necessarily everywhere, um, uh, but they still have mobile phones. Mm. Right? So what triggered my thought was that they could actually use a mobile phone, a smartphone at it as well. Um, they could use that to take a picture of the soil. Uh, in fact, this is what he was doing. So this was triggered a, a little bit of inspiration for me. Uh, he was using the soil uh, and, and an app that was developed by an Indian company there at the time uh, and to check what sort of manure it might need based on the crop they're going to on there having taken that picture it was then uploaded onto the cloud and uh, and then it gave back a range of options for the manure so i think that kind of concept is where you know you bring in data you bring in ai you bring in mobile you're bringing uh, bringing in um, uh, uh, the cloud technology and possibly other uh, solutions around blockchain could be part of that because then once the crop's been matured uh, and is ready to pick up and pluck and put onto the container he could then uh, sell that onto the market as well, and then you can attach a, a, a marketplace at the at the back end of that as well. So I think there's just so much uh, technology will bring to solve those problems. And if you can sell, if that farmer can sell that at a good price, and efficiently, effectively, uh, and, and and load it onto the supply chain, I think there's enormous benefits for for the community. I guess. In terms of some of the barriers to that, and I, I don't want to focus on the negatives, but it's really important that we get government and industry and entrepreneurs to work together in this space, Absolutely. isn't it? Because, uh, and, and when I talk about government, you mentioned a couple of countries. So in Thailand and in India, you've got the India, the Digital India 2030 yes. program. Yes. They're sitting on a lot of information and a lot of data. Surely one of the challenges is to unlock that data and make sure that people can get access to it. How, how do we how do we need to what are the next steps for us to, to try and bring together government industry and entrepreneurship so that it's all working together so look I think it's recognizing an ecosystem uh, in my view in fact I, I, I worked on a project with the Asian Development Bank that was focused on creating uh, creating that ecosystem of entrepreneurs of government agencies regulatory agencies uh, and other stakeholders in academia um, I think it's just that awareness that there's just so much data. Uh, and capability that you bring it together in some form or another. And and so, you know, for example, a number of the governments in Asia in particular, and this is where a lot of the action is happening, which is quite interesting. Um, and, and for us, for, for here, uh, for us in Australia, we've got a great opportunity to plug into those. So identifying, you know, the verticals that need uh, or, or can leverage off of capability and technology. Um, so pick up those sort of 17 UN SDGs and say, which ones, where, where, where's our strengths, where's our focus, where's our key capabilities, where's our strengths, and then plug ourselves into there and let that create. And, and the state government, one of my ex-employers, has done a wonderful job, uh, uh, you know, bringing different ecosystems together. Uh, to help facilitate, to bring those entrepreneurs, to bring the the stakeholders, to bring the customers, because ultimately it's about the customers who have a problem that needs to be solved. And they're not necessarily the technologies, technologists or the designers, but by bringing them all together, I think you can create enormous solutions going forward. Jim G, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, David. Pleasure. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.